Everything ends in chaos. Today we bought Saumya a pair of gold earrings to celebrate her 10th birthday, Grandma announced. And all eyes turned to Saumya, who preened and tossed her head about, making her new earrings dance. She'd gone along to the jeweller to choose them herself and was delighted with her gift. Her younger sister Ramya was madly jealous, but she'd been assured that she'd get the pair of her choice on her 10th birthday. And now, she was in even more of a rush to reach that hallowed age. That reminds me of another earring story, Grandma said. And everyone's attention was back with her in a flash. No one ever knew how current happenings looped into Grandma's memories. So the adults each prayed it wasn't their turn to roast on the spit. The kids loved the roastings though. Because they were a delightful opportunity to hear about all the mischief their parents and aunts and uncles had got up to. And who'd ever want to miss that? I'm sure you'll remember, Lena, Grandma started, as it was your earring that was lost. Lena gasped aloud, clearly remembering all, and whacked her husband Shiv playfully on his mad mop of curly hair. Shiv protested vehemently. Ow! I'm always getting the short end of the stick. This is most unfair, Lena. And Grandma, you really shouldn't be encouraging her. I don't remember any of this. I must protest my innocence. But he good-naturedly resigned himself to his fate. These two were not yet married, Grandma continued. But Shiv was in our house more than Lena was, I sometimes thought. Supposed to be doing his articleship with a big-name accounting firm, But anyone could tell his heart wasn't in it. His body certainly wasn't. It was in our house all the time. How he didn't get turfed out of that job, I'm at a loss to say. They couldn't resist my blandishments, Grandma, Shiv intoned cheekily. Shiv could charm the birds out of the trees. It was true. And considering the miserable pittance they were paying me, they had no right to any work anyway. I couldn't even afford my own lunch every day, which is why I was scrounging so shamelessly off you, he added mischievously. Eating me out of house and home, Grandpa grumbled. For all he adored his family, sons-in-law always came in for regular crossfire from Grandpa. Shiv and Satish, Rad's husband, were the black sheep in his worldview, carrying away his darling daughters. Grandma shushed Grandpa. Now don't be mean, dearest. I agree he didn't seem to promise much in those early days, but he's turned out favourably under Lena's steady hand. (laughs) The room erupted in hoots and cheers and Grandma grinned wickedly at Shiv, whom she was actually very fond of. Lena puffed up as if she was genuinely deserving of the credit and poor Shiv tried to look offended but he never was any good at playing the underdog. Shush, everybody, Saumya scolded, protective of her dear daddy. I want to hear about the earring. What happened about the earring, Grandma? Did Mummy really lose it? She glanced balefully at Lena, probably planning to tuck the story away against the day she herself lost something of value. In good time, my dear, admonished Grandma. You know a story must start at the beginning, don't you? So, I remember it was a Sunday or a holiday or something because Shiv was with us the whole day. Arrived soon after breakfast and left well after dinner, as he often did on holidays. Lena was the only child still at home. The others were married and settled and Grandpa and I knew that with Shiv always at the door, It would only be a short time before she flew on to her own life too. We played cards and dumb charades, discussed and argued all manner of things and settled disputes by arm wrestling as always. The siblings exchanged amused glances. 
They had many memories of days just like the one Grandma had described. And all were arm-wrestling champs. As for Grandma, even now, if she planted her right elbow aggressively on a table, many of us capitulated straight away. It was too disgraceful to be trounced by a little old lady with silver hair. Lena was laying the table for lunch when I noticed one of her earrings was missing. It was a pair she'd earned with her excellent school leaving results and it was precious to her. I was certain I'd have noticed if it was missing earlier, so it must have happened during the morning, fairly recently. Grandpa and Shiv moved the furniture and Lena and Shiv crawled about on their hands and knees, peering into dark places, tilting their heads this way and that at ground level, hoping to catch a golden glint. And I burrowed my fingers into the sides of her bed and the sofas in case it had dropped there. Lunch was forgotten as we spent the better part of an hour looking everywhere, with nothing to show for all our efforts. Finally, Lena tearfully took off the other earring, which I put away safely, and we sat down to a dejected and despondent lunch. It's very upsetting to lose jewellery, you know. Every piece is tied up with memories and emotions and to lose anything, no matter how small, is gut-wrenching. And all four of us were very upset. After lunch, we looked again, in a more scientific manner, like a grid search. Lena's bedroom, the bathroom, the living room, dining room, kitchen, through the laundry even, in case the earring had come off when she'd undressed, unlikely though that was. But we couldn't find it anywhere. Finally, Grandpa called off the hunt and made us sit down. If it were to be found, it would be, he said. And if it were not, I was to wait a few months and get the pair made for her. It was decided. We were still upset. But it was a relief to have been given an edict. In an attempt to divert us, Shiv reminded us that there was a cricket match on TV and perhaps we'd like to catch a few overs. Now you know, I'm really not interested in cricket, so I volunteered to make us some tea to lift our spirits while they watched. In the kitchen, I kept myself occupied while the water boiled and the tea steeped. I heard them cheering and groaning alternately. I was quite relieved to be in my own kingdom and not to have to watch their boring old game, Grandma said ruefully. And we knew only too well that she'd do almost anything to avoid watching a cricket match or even listening to us talk about one. It was one of the few things that Grandma was just not interested in. So when there were loud shouts and cheers and squeals of delight, I just carried on pottering away in my kitchen. The opposing team must have lost a wicket or we'd scored a six or something like that. But Lena came in whooping, face wreathed in smiles and dangling the missing earring joyfully. You won't believe where we found it, Ma. You'll never believe it. I wiped my hands quickly and went rushing out to share in the excitement. Turns out there'd been a dropped catch and they'd all shouted at the butterfingered fielder and Shiv had thumped his forehead in disgust. And out of his thick mop of hair had tumbled the errant earring, tinkling and rolling onto the floor. He'd watched it in shock and pointed to it and Lena had pounced on it voraciously like a hungry hyena. Grandpa was inordinately delighted since his plan of wait and watch had proved so speedily fruitful. Lena was dancing with joy and Shiv was running his hands through his unruly curls, still amazed at how the earring could have got there in the first place. All of us burst into suggestive oohs, but Grandma ticked us off immediately. Now, 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 they were with us the whole morning, so there's no call for any of that. Lena blushed even after so many years, but Shiv's eyes were glistening wickedly and Grandpa wagged a disciplinary finger at the marauding son-in-law. Hmm? So since his treacherous hair had first swallowed, 
but then happily disgorged Lena's precious earring. I forgave him and his wicked hair, and he'll confirm that from that day to this, however long and unruly it gets, and however much I may deplore it privately, I've never openly advised him to have a haircut. In my book, he's earned the right to keep his curly locks. Shiv offered her a silent thumbs up to confirm that, while Grandpa grumbled something about some people growing older but never getting any wiser. Someone who shall remain nameless suggested that an experiment be conducted in an empirical manner. Objects of various size and weight should be thrown at Shiv's head to see if he really could suck them up like a vacuum cleaner. The room exploded in boisterous chaos as many agreed that this was a most excellent idea. Saumya and Ramya screamed and charged to protect their darling daddy from us wicked people. And the warm glow of love and family feeling filled the room as always after another successful session of story time with Grandma.